Howdy, welcome back to the shop. I'm going to go over a little bit on my little load bank. Somebody on one of the genera generator forums that I'm a part of asked me some questions about a homemade lo load bank. I uh, don't know what all to say about this. This is made, this is just sheet metal and parts that I had laying around and stuff that was basically scrap. But we'll just kind of start at the start. Okay, there's four steps on this. This is fan. Uh, each one of these steps is a 20 amp two pole switch, uh, just a standard house switch, but it's 20 amp two pole. And each lead is color coded. And the other end of the lead is matching color, like the yellow, the yellow switch goes to the yellow lead and so on and so forth. Uh, since the fans, and I'll show you them in a second, the fans are, are uh, 110 volt instead of 220 volt fans. So I've got a neutral and a safety ground lead that I tie into typically the transfer switch box. Uh, this conglomeration here is about as dangerous as it looks. Uh, I just wire this in to the transfer switch while I'm doing the load bank. Uh, it's kind of handy because I can stick my probes right in here uh, and I can just wrap, wrap an amp clamp around here and I can get amp measurements and get voltage measurements and frequency measurements. And you know, as I'm loading and unloading, I'm also uh, got my manometer. Usually I've got a eight or a 10 foot hose for my manometer. So typically, most of my setups, my transfer switch is pretty close to the generator on the pole and the, and the generator is about 10 feet from the pole. So I'm able to set my manometer up here on top of this and uh, watch my gas pressures as I'm load banking because, you know, all of you know that probably the number one problem is insufficient gas to the generator. So, you know, if you load this sucker up at 20 kW on a 20 kW machine and your propane, your inlet propane pressure to your generator drops down to five inches, well, right now, you know insufficient gas. There's no arguing with it. You can just say, this doesn't have enough gas to give me 11 inches of water column at full load. It's not gonna run, run right. Please fix, the, please fix the problem, Mr. Gas Man. So enough of that. Uh, now this could be done a thousand different ways. The next iteration of this is just going to have uh, probably weller lead and I'll just use uh, three pulls, you know, two hots and a neutral of welder lead and then a small safety wire, safety ground. Uh, and I'll split this up different. The reason I've got it like this is I can configure this to run uh, 110 volt loads like on a small portable generator or something you know I can just you know take this lead right here the red lead and run you know hot and a neutral to a 110 plug and bang I'm set up to load for 110 on that plug works pretty good uh, for, for doing load bank on small portable stuff now the, the fans the fans on these are just little old biscuit blowers. I've got a supplier on these here in town. They're a, uh, uh, they do a lot of commercial industrial panel building, uh, control circuitry and stuff like that for weird industrial plants. But uh, years ago, they ordered a skid of these little biscuit blowers and they got the wrong thing in. So they're selling these for like 20 or 30 bucks a pop, which is really cool. And I think these things push like uh, 250 or and maybe even 500 CFM per blower. It's, uh, they push an amazing amount of air. But that's what I use for the blowers. Uh, one of the first ones of these that I built, I built out of an old furnace air handler or electric furnace, and it was God awful heavy. I mean, you had to have a two wheeler to move it on job site. This one weighs about 35, 40 pounds. So it's a lot, a lot lighter. Now the business end of this, 
uh, is, let's see, there's uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 kW of, of strips over here. And these are uh, seven and a half a piece. So there's another 15. There's 35 kW if you wired these all for 220. But I've got these things shunt wired to where they're, it's all halved. And uh, that way these aren't glowing red. Uh, I had a customer one time that seen the, the heater elements in one of these glowing red and, and got a little weird on me. He was afraid I'd set a fire. So these don't really glow red. There'll be a little bit of orange like on the very end zone down there, but they don't, they don't really glow red and, and bright. Uh, you can kind of see up in there some of the wiring, but it's, I mean, you guys are generator guys, you know how to wire. Uh, I can't really think of anything else to say about that. I hope this doesn't violate my uh, uh, non-disclosure statement. Color guys won't get this, but Generac guys will. And I got a bad case of the CRS, so I got to write stuff like that down. Um, again, these are 110 volt. Uh, if I had a source for 220 volt blower motors, I would use them, but, or fan motors, these aren't blowers, they're fans. If I had 220 volt cheap, I'd use those. I'm sure you can buy something similar to this off of Flea Bay. Um, just so happens that Cobby's had them here local. They were cheap. If anybody's interested, uh, put a comment on the YouTube, not on the Facebook, but on the YouTube, put a comment down there and I will uh, answer it with the phone number for Cobby's. And I did ask uh, their parts man if he would ship these and he said, you know, if the price is right, he'll ship them to French Indochina. So uh, anyway, that's about all I got to say about that. I hope this helps somebody out. <clears throat> um, don't make fun of me because, you know, I'm just a poor old farm boy and this is what we got to deal with. You know, poor people got poor ways. And it, uh, I'm not going to spend five grand on load bank to load bank a crappy old air-cooled generator. You know, if I lived in, uh, you know, suburbs of Chicago and I had 6,000 generators to take care of, yeah, I'd go buy me an Avion or, you know, a, a nice load bank. But... I'm out here in the sticks. You know, I've got about 200 generators, mostly air-cooled to, to load bank. This does great. Uh, Y'all have a good one. Drive safe. Watch for deer.